Chapter 9. The Two Swords All human societies of all time need this authoritative guidance of Peter, the priest of Christ, the king and creator of mankind. Christ alone can ensure true liberty, equality, fraternity, through Peter governing by the union of church and state, head and arm. This union created Catholic Europe, broken up by Protestantism, now threatened by globalism. Jesus Christ is the king of the world. He speaks to the world by his priest, and the decrees of this priest, inasmuch as they are the expression of the kingly rights of Jesus Christ, are themselves eternal. They do not apply to any one time, but to all time. Not to any one society, but to all societies. Not to a handful of men, but to all mankind. And since they are dictated in accordance with the very nature of mankind by the creator of mankind himself, human society needs them everywhere. Everywhere man instinctively calls out for them with cries and groans, by his abiding disquiet and with unspeakable pangs. For outside of their sway nothing good exists. Nothing good has the fullness or guarantee of life. That is why there is no time, no society whatsoever, not a single human being, from whom Christ faithful ought not to demand, whenever they are able, some form of obedience to the decrees of the priest of Jesus Christ, King of the world. The children of Christ, the children of the King, are themselves kings. They form a society far superior to any other, and it should take possession of the earth and reign there in order to baptize all men and raise them up to the same supernatural life, to the same kingship and glory to which Christ has destined them. They ought to tend always toward this end, because the universal sway of Christ alone can bring about universal liberty, universal equality, and universal fraternity. For the liberty proper to man is the liberty to attain his supernatural end, namely to attain Christ, and the only society ever known to have recognized all men for equals and brothers is the society of Christ's disciples. Christian society, under normal circumstances, maintains itself and extends its domain by means of two forces that ought to be distinct but not separate, united but not confused, subordinated one to the other and not equal. The one is the head and the other the arm. The first is the pontiff's supreme and final word. The second is a secular power. Since Christian society is first and foremost Christian, it submits everything to this first law, and thus it puts everything in its rightful place. Since it first puts Christ in his rightful place as the only true Lord and Master, it puts him in his place as sovereign within society, just as all the faithful put him in his sovereign place within their souls. And from there spring order, liberty, unity, greatness, justice, sovereignty, and peace. Thus, despite the rifts provoked by human passions and weaknesses, there solely form the magnificent variety of Catholic Europe, that community that we might call the Christian Republic, or even the Christian family. A marvelous achievement, broken up by heresy, just when eternal peace and progress of the arts promised the fruits of the redemption to the entire human race. If Catholic unity had been maintained in the 16th century, there would be no more infidels, no more idolaters, no more slaves. The human race would be Christian today, and by the number and the diversity of nations united in a common faith, it would have kept clear of the global despotism that is such a threat hanging over it now.